Hi everybody, welcome to our video spotlight. I'm Mike Martin here with John Fanning and Kelby Russell, who is uh, the winemaker here at Red Newt Cellars. Uh, we're in the Finger Lakes in New York, um, and we're on the southeast side of Seneca Lake. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at some of these single vineyard wines. We're here to celebrate and partake in um, the Finger Lakes Wine Month. It's uh, in May, and we're gonna talk about some of the single vineyard wines that Kelby's making. In 2011, we have uh, four single vineyard Rieslings that we have out right now. Uh, it's a project that we started in 2009 to have a few single vineyard bottlings of Riesling, and it's kind of expanded from there. We had two or three the first year, uh, and then we've been adding as we've went. We have four for 2011, and uh, there are six in the works for 2012, just because the demand's there. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have four in front of us right now from 2011 that uh, all were just released with a little bit of bottle age. Uh, we have two dry. We have our Sawmill Creek Vineyards, which is just about uh, a quarter mile in front of us here at Red Newt Cellars. It's right down on the lake. Uh, we have Bullhorn Creek, which is uh, a vineyard about a mile south of us, uh, right on the lake as well. Tango Oaks Vineyard uh, is actually right next door to Sawmill Creek. They're almost on the exact same property. There's just a, uh, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference unless you knew where the line was. And then uh, last but not least, we have La Homa Vineyards, which is uh, a site that's uh, directly across the lake from us. Uh, it's you know three or four miles as the crow flies and 45 minutes by car because you have to get around the, the side of Seneca Lake and through mm -hmm. Watkins. Uh, so all Seneca Lake fruit across the board for all the single vineyards. And if I remember correctly, Red Newt was founded in uh, 99, 2000? Uh, yep, 98 was the first vintage. 99 okay. is when it opened up. Okay. Uh, so. And you know, like many Finger Lakes wineries, you've been making a, a pretty broad range of wines ever since. Uh, reds, whites, you know, higher end, lower end, sweeter, drier, and uh, from what I understand you're kind of taking a, a direction towards single vineyard Rieslings, maybe a couple other whites, mm -hmm. uh, single vineyard reds only, and kind of narrowing the focus to vineyard specific, higher end, premium Finger Lakes wines, really. And that, I think that's where the region's going and where the region should go, is where uh, really investing in Riesling is the grape that people are sure. responding to, uh, the grape that also responds the best to just the sites in the Finger Lakes, yeah. the, the differences between them and the fun that we can have in the winery with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, some of your background, we should probably mention that with uh, Boundary Breaks mm -hmm. and with the Tierce Riesling that was used at the inauguration uh, for, for President Obama. Um, yeah, it's very cool. All right, let's try some of these. Absolutely. Uh, why don't we try the uh, Bullhorn Creek? This is, again, 2011. It's a dry Riesling. Uh, Bullhorn Creek is a rather small planting of Riesling. It's uh, in the midst of a large field of Concord, uh, which might not sound promising. It does not carry through in the wine, I assure you. Uh, it's actually a, a one acre planting of Clone 90, which is known as the Go Broke clone, uh, in that it yields so little yields. fruit. Yeah. Very, very little fruit. Uh, I've started to refer to this wine, especially the 2012 version, uh, uh, as kind of the, I call it the Hector Wurzgarten, uh, play on the German uh, sure. spice garden, just because there's a lot of spice in this wine, uh, a lot of minerality. Uh, it's really just, it's something that we've been working with for four or five years before we put out as a single vineyard, uh, just because we wanted to make sure that we were doing justice to the fruit that was coming in. Sure. And kind of as a brief explanation, I mean, the, the, the great majority of wine in the world is made from uh, you know, purchased grapes from no specific Vineyard is specific regions sometimes, sometimes you know, the, even on the Finger Lakes you'll see only New York on the label, only the state is named, where any great wine region of the world, whether it be Burgundy or, or the Mosul, um, you don't reach that level of really great wine until you're designating where the wine's actually coming from, very site specific, and uh, Red Dude's been doing it since 2004, I believe, mm -hmm. with, with, a, with a Merlot, and but one, of, one of the earliest, one of the handful that have recognized the idea that to put the Finger Lakes on the map, we have to look at it uh, in, in pieces. You know, this piece of Seneca Lake is going to produce a different wine, uh, whether it be better or not, just a different wine, different expression than elsewhere. So uh, as, as Kelby said, right now four single vineyard Rieslings is going to be six. 
you have some single vineyard Gewurz Schmuner, Pinot Gris, and Cab Franc. And Cab Franc, yeah. and Merlot. And Merlot also. Uh, they're, they're just fun wines for us to make as well. It's a luxury to be able to keep all these lots of wines mm. separate in the cellar, but mm. they, uh, it's like you said, there's not that one's better or worse than the rest, and as flattered as we are whenever we get you know very nice reviews, whether it's by people or in magazines, sure. uh, the most important thing with these is that people have a chance to taste them and just appreciate that there are differences between these vineyards, and you don't have to be you know, a wine snob or a wine expert to get that point. It's yeah, very, absolutely. very obvious differences and really kind of fun differences. Yeah, very much so. And I should probably point out that um, our retail on these wines are 18 to $20 yeah, yeah, in, that, in that price range. Yeah, while we have many red new wines in the store, um, the single vineyard recently especially, a um, little, little trickier for us to get our hands on. We, we've spoken and will get our hands on them. And yeah, I think they'll be in market view for somewhere between the 17 to 22 bucks yeah. or so to keep it a little bit broad. Yeah, so but, but yeah, in that range. And there's a lot of people who have been calling and asking about you know, like I said, the forge and the boundary breaks and these kinds of wines. So th these are going to fit right in with those higher quality uh, single vineyards. Yeah. yeah, I think to take a region like the Finger Lakes and to really think, okay, historically that looks a touch expensive for New York, but uh, if you're looking at the fact that this is becoming or has become a world class wine region and we're kind of talking top of the line, mm -hmm. so if you're talking about, you know, maxing out at 20 maybe $30, really the finest wine that a world-class wine region has to make versus uh, pick any other wine region and see what you have to pay to, <laughs> to, to, to max it out. So I think in the end, when you find a winery like Red Newt that is focusing on, on you know, the quality and the sites the way they are, um, suddenly we're talking about $20 being pretty incredible value uh, for, for what you're getting, and for, yeah. the, for the attention and for the, the care that's put, put, into, put into the wine. Uh, also, um, one other thing, I think that's very helpful is there's a lot of information on the backs of the, of the wine mm -hmm. bottles, um, you know, dry to sweet and uh, residual sugar, pH, all those kinds of things, acidity. So I, I think it's very helpful. We so even have people using those, we have the QR codes on the back and that people mm -hmm. are actually, yep. you know, it's sure. actually really handy right. for people to just, yep. if they're in a store and want to take a scan of it and go to our website for more info, it's right there. Yeah, yeah very good. So we're tasting uh, so we're now tasting uh, the 2011 Tango Oaks. Tango Oaks. Is basically immediately in front of us again. Uh, it's very much uh, a classic. We call this southeast side of Seneca Lake the banana belt oh, within the, the, the real peach. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, here it is. And the it's, peach, yeah. you know, people say, well, that's funny. Why do you say banana belt? And it's uh, because with the east face, uh, sorry, west facing slopes on this east side of the lake, they're very steep. Uh, and during June and July, they're just getting hit with that late evening sun. It, yeah. it doesn't bake the fruit, we're not getting raisins, but. In terms of ripeness, there's sure. just a different profile to fruit on this side of the lake. So this Tango Oaks, uh, you know, whereas the Bullhorn Creek was a very dry Riesling, this is, was about a mile difference in the vineyard, and in terms of wine style, it couldn't be much more different. Yeah. It's a very low alcohol, mm -hmm. uh, quite sweet wine, very, sure. very well balanced, high acid, uh, mm. really one that's made to age. And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, this is the one that you said will pretty much vary year to year depending on the vintage and the fruit, where 2012 will be a significantly drier wine. Um, so we shouldn't think of Tango Oaks as just sweeter style, so yeah. just, just a, just a yeah. variation on it. Delicious, really. Yeah, these are fantastic. So Calvi, as Mike mentioned, um, I mean, you've, been, you've been doing this for a you know, good four or five years now, but have been doing the kind of flying winemaker back and forth yeah, it feels in the southern, southern hemisphere. Um, mm -hmm. So experience in Australian Riesling, New Zealand Riesling, and you're from the area, I'm guessing? I'm from yeah, the area, so up near Rochester. Back. Okay, so brought, it, brought it back home. Um, yeah, again, so May's Finger Lakes Wine Month uh, through the Finger Lakes Wine Alliance, where uh, Red New definitely one of the top wineries in the Alliance, if not top, top wineries in the Finger Lakes, and definitely top in the state. And this is, uh, we've been hearing a lot about the single vineyard focus you're going to be taking, and we've been really, been really excited by it. So we were lucky to be able to come down here today and, uh, and taste through these. So yeah. I think if you don't watch Red Newt over the next two or three vintages really turn into what's going to be kind of the, uh, the new philosophy of the Finger Lakes and the new site focused vineyard designated focus of the Finger Lakes. And uh, yeah, it was, it was great to taste them today. Thank you. Yeah, really. thank you, Kyle. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, Thanks for coming down. Yeah, Thank you.